Songwriters in the Round is a monthly gathering of songwriters from around the region. We're at the Balsam Mountain Inn again for another round of songwriters. And this time we've got Tom, Tommy, and Tommy. And they're all from the Carolinas. Tommy, here, here you are with three Tommies, and yep. you have such an interesting background. So you, in your early days, you, you, you played some bluegrass, you also played a little rock and roll. I played rock and roll for years. Professional career such as it was, I was mainly a lead guitar player. So that's your music side, but you also got another side. You're, you're an editor for a newspaper. Uh, yes, I've been a journalist now for 31 years, and my standing witticism on this is I decided to get out of music and to get into something more stable, but I got into journalism instead. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think that that blend has affected what you actually produce? In journalism, you learn to communicate clearly in the amount of space or time that you have. And to be accurate, in music you want to be accurate, but in a different way. It's what feels right for the song, or what's true to the idea that you have for a song or a performance. I never knew how she linger on this old devil's How did music become a part of your life? Well, I guess it always was a part of my life. Mm -hmm. I was born into it. My father was a huge influence on me. He was a bluegrass musician, played in bands, um, Reno and Smiley. Uh, he played with Don Gibson. He played with all a bunch of them back in the day. And I sang with them in a group, even, with my two sisters at one point. And my grandfather played fiddle. and. It was just our life. And I mean, it's, it's almost like you couldn't escape it, right? Because yeah, it was, it was there. Part your, yeah, part of your life. I mean, really, and that was early on. And I, I have been to school. I was a music major and okay. got a degree in music, and uh, voice was my main instrument. I've messed around with my life, not really doing a whole lot, except writing songs and poems and kicking around. And Goldsmith was one of the first first people to say, like, you ought to come into a studio, stupid, and record some songs. And then it's like, okay. Received a letter from my father today. Time, he said, not that much to say, but it just... And I wanted to be a writer all my life. I knew that. And, uh, and so I was writing poetry and short stories, and I would, sometimes I'd play folk songs. And I started writing some songs with, I've got a friend, and uh, actually he's a cousin, Don Schlitz, and he, he dropped out of Duke about the same time I dropped out of North Carolina. And um, so we started writing songs, and we started talking about going somewhere, and Nashville seemed the most natural place. I kind of hit like a groove, you know, really early on, and, uh, and I haven't changed that much. And, so I would go to the go to the, the bars and the dives and play in those, and everybody was always really supportive of each other. I enjoyed playing that, and I enjoyed writing writing songs, you know. And and I got more and more into it. I, when I started out, I was scared, you know, and uh, of a uh, stage fright and all that. Especially writing your own songs, that's different. And it's a haven of unrest and bad behavior. <laughs> <laughs> it's very unfortunate, but um, it's kind of entertaining too. <laughs>
understand how special it is for, for people in the audience to have this intimate experience with songwriters. It's, it's a chance that maybe they don't normally get. Now, what about from your side as a performer? It's great. You have something that you've created that's meant so much to you that you've created words and uh, music to go with it, and it becomes you know, like a child, a new thing in your life that you really care about. You know, it's a good feeling to know that they're listening, and, mm -hmm. and this situation is set up that people actually want to listen to what you're doing, you know. It's fun to actually sing it and see what they think, see, yeah. see if they agree. Nashville in those days were all these houses on the Music Road that you always hear about, 16th and 17th, and they were rooming houses, and it would be you and three or four other people, and they were always musicians. Everybody would get in the kitchen and sit around and pass the guitar and, and sing their songs. Well, like this, the songwriters in the room. Yeah, exactly, exactly. When you set and write, are you writing for you? Are you, you have, are you thinking about someone that you want to record your songs? For me, my natural state is to write what I want to write and write for me. I write with my husband some too, Warren and Denny, and we have our friend Shelton, Hank Three, and um, we've written some material with him. The guy is so, such a sweetheart and such a good musician. And uh, it's exciting, we wrote a song for him that he actually did good with, Carmageddon. It's Carmageddon? Yeah, it's Carmageddon. Tell me when that moment, what you would consider to be your first success, that thing that you're like, oh my God, this is great. I went to Nashville at 19 with a friend of mine from Raleigh, and we met a producer, and he said, come on in the studio with us, boys. And we went into the studio that was owned by Scotty Moore, who was Elvis Presley's guitar player. On the session was DJ Fontana, Elvis's drummer, and a couple of other session people. And here Steve and I were at 19, recording in a big time Nashville studio, songs we had written by someone who wanted to get us a record deal. That felt great. Of course, it didn't happen. <laughs> but, but you went through the steps. We went through it, and we went through a lot of that. I mean, as someone said, uh, we hit the big time and bounced off. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you've had a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. And, you know, I've sustained myself to some degree as a musician for about 11 years. And since then, I've produced records for a lot of people and done recording. I have my own digital studio at home and still make records, and I still love it. You love music? Yes. Yes, of course, I love music. I love music, yes. It's, it's, it's me. It's always been me. The joy out of just creating something out of yourself and, you know, and getting it across to someone else. That, to me, is what it's all about. You know, it wasn't about selling songs to anybody else like that. It is actually writing songs that nobody else has written or could write, except for me.